Hello, good people of the internet. Today, I'm going to be giving you good folks a line by line breakdown of the cascading style sheet I use to style my personal website, chrisware.uk. Uh, that's this website you can see here. Uh, I've made the text uh, substantially larger just so you can see uh, what's on the website. And as you can see, uh, I'm very fond of the minimalist design. Um, I designed this uh, website completely from code, HTML and CSS, all written up by hand. So everything you're going to be seeing is entirely my work. And I host it on neocities.org, which is a great little hosting website if you just want to put together a basic website that you can code yourself, keep it slim. It's designed to be as accessible to as accessible as possible, accessible to as many different computers and screens as possible. So that allows, you know, that that means it's going to have a flexible layout uh, as well as uh, the ability to be read in things like text only browsers. So this website uh, is uh, going to look as good in, for example, the Lynx browser as a standard modern web browser. Um, and because all it primarily does is provide what I believe to be useful information uh, to those who might be passing by. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need any advanced frameworks or, um, you know, JavaScript or anything like that. It's completely free of JavaScript. It's completely free of, of anything other than just some basic HTML code conveying the information that I wish to convey and some basic uh, CSS styling just to, just to give it a little bit of a personal touch. This website didn't always have a CSS uh, style sheet to go with it. Uh, but I I decided to put a little bit of a personal flair on it a couple of years ago. Uh, so it is designed with brutalist design in mind. And that means, um, you know, very minimalist, but also like it adheres to, to standard principles, ideally among the ones that I, I've sort of just previously stated, that it's just as easy to read on as many different devices as possible. Uh, an example of how uh, Brutalist Design is designed to be a touch more accessible is that uh, the uh, hyperlinks are underlined um, rather than just a slightly different colour. Some websites will have, so for example, they'll have like text will be in a light grey and then hyperlinks will be in a slightly darker grey. I've seen that on quite a few websites. And the distinction is, uh, in my opinion, somewhat too subtle. Like if you want some, if you want to um, indicate to the end user that something can be clicked on, uh, I always feel it's best to make sure that that is obvious. And it's a standard protocol across the internet that hyperlinks are underlined. So I've decided to keep a hard underline there rather than underlining on hover or anything like that, uh, simply because if you just look at this website right here, right now, you know what's a title because it's you know, big text line underneath it. You know what's a link because it's a different color underlined. Uh, and you know how to get back to the main uh, part of the website because you've got the, the title here. Um, and that just heads right back up. You can click that. So if I wanted to go to this website and then I wanted to return, it's just a simple, it's, it's always in the top left corner of the page, how to get back home. That's it. As you can see how fast this just loads up. Absolutely. It's almost instant. And I am browsing this through the website. This is not like a local mirror or anything like that. Uh, you can see the podcast that I've been on. You can see all the ways you can keep in touch uh, with me, all of the various um, Fediverse handles that I've got, all of the various uh, things that you can follow me on, contact me on, all that kind of stuff, all the, all the little bits of projects and ways you can support the channel if you so wish. So not the most exciting of websites, but um, I think that we can all agree that it's very straightforward and forthright in what it aims to do. So I'll give you a look at the uh, behind the scenes. This is pulling back the curtain. And as you can see here, this is this is it. This is the CSS. OK, so the code itself is quite simple. Uh, everything that I've done is uh, with inside the brackets of media only screen. That's the top line here. Uh, what that means is that all of the styling applies only to what is visible on a screen. So if you were to print off this website, uh, you know, using a printer, obviously, uh, it would revert back to complete standard formatting and you would just have basically an unformatted website in the most basic and straightforward um, way possible. This fundamentally allows the end user to style it. Also, the styling that I've done for this website, for example, the green uh, hyperlinks, it's not going to look good printed out and browsers default printing um, style will, will almost certainly be better than anything that I can be bothered to design for it. It's a website that's not designed to be printed out admittedly, but if it is, uh, you know, it's nice to, to recognize, you know, to have it print out at least legibly and clearly. Um, so I think just not styling the printed out version of the website at all is probably the best method for that. So 
we've got the body tag here. This is everything visible that you see on the website. And all I've done here is I've indicated the background color two two two. That's just that's just the gray. So it's, it's near black, but it's gray. The color FFF that is white for um, the text. So I, I like a very strong contrast. So uh, people with maybe low quality monitors or poorer uh, eyesight, or maybe people trying to what you know like look on a monitor that's like uh too big or too small or anything like that like you know to keep the um clarity of text is always going to be an advantage to your website never a disadvantage right no one's ever complained that a website was too easy to read or too clear with uh, with what it's trying to say right and then the third line of the of the body tag that's being styled is very simply the font uh, some websites, if I remember correctly, will default to a sans, ser ser a sans serif font. Others will uh, default to a serif font. Uh, I just wanted, because of the modern design and the colors, I didn't necessarily care what font the, um, the, the website was displayed in, just that it was displayed in a sans serif font. So my first font of choice is Liberation Sans. That is a font that comes on most uh, Linux distributions. It's a, it's a free uh, font for distribution and, and all of that. So it's a font that a lot of people using free and open source uh, distributions are likely to have. Uh, and because it's the leftmost one, that's the one it's going to opt in first. And then if it doesn't have that particular font, just whatever sans serif font uh, has been uh, selected by the, the browser. Each browser has a has a sans serif font in mind when uh, when it's asked to pull up a sans serif font. Sometimes that's Arial, sometimes that's Helvetica. So it's just a sans serif font. In all honesty, you know, they basically look a lot of the same. And also it does allow the end user, like so for example, if the end user... Uh, it might might prefer a dyslexic friendly font. They can select that in their browser and presuming they don't have Liberation Sans, but then they select it as their sans serif font of choice. Then they get to read it in 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 that in their font of so, uh, choice there. Uh, but I think that would that would involve more setting up than most people do with their browsers. I don't set custom fonts in my browsers because, to be honest, most websites will choose a font for you. Uh, but it is some food for thought. Uh, and also part of the philosophy of other uh, internet um, protocols like uh, like Gopher, and I believe there's a, quite a new one as well, that you you allow the end user ch to choose the font um, because you know they're obviously going to be the best judge of that, whether or not they want a dyslexic friendly one, a high contrast one, a big one, a small one. But I've I've given the the end user a, a, a substantial amount of freedom, but generally speaking, it's like Liberation Sans or whatever sans serif font you've got. Now I've styled the first uh, two headings, he heading one and heading two, uh, with a border bottom, but heading three through till six, they are just standard um, uh, headings that um, are whatever the browser's default are that usually descend down in size. Um, I don't think, I've, I think I might have like a, a heading three somewhere in, in the uh, website but other than that not every heading needs to be like a separator heading uh things that are under h1 or h2 are likely to be in like their own proper section and then some things that are h3 and before that they're likely to be subsections of smaller sections so it, it, it that's the way that i've i've worked it out it's not not every not every heading needs to be a banger uh, and then uh hyperlink text which is uh denoted by the a tag and that's the color zero F seven. That is the color. That is the color that I associate with this channel, and uh, I'm quite fond of it. Um, so there we go. That's just a blow by blow of my style sheets that that goes into this website. Quite a useful website. I'm uh, quite proud of it. I do update it from time to time. Uh, one of the fav my favorite pages on it is uh, useful apps and interesting websites. And here is just a, sh a short directory that I try and keep as up to date as possible of some games, some open source software that's generally readily available on Linux, uh, open source web apps, uh, things like uh, HTML house, a quick and easy website creation tool for people who just like to code in HTML, stuff like that. Um, but all in all, I might take WordPress off. WordPress has, 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 not, be, has not necessarily been the, the web building tool that I, I necessarily would like to recommend to others you know it's it's gotten really clunky lately um and there we go and we just click go back to chris Ware's website right at the top if you ever need to go back to the the home page of the the website
that's really about it. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm quite proud of... I, I basically tried to star this website using as few lines of, of code as possible. Um, I mean, technically what I could have done is I could have put like all this stuff on the, on the same line. To, you know, that would look so it's, to sort of minimize the, the technical number of lines. Uh, but all things considering, that would have been cheating and would have done, you know, has the same amount of information in there as well. Um, but all said, I'm quite fond of it. Uh, I like NeoCities as a website um, development tool. Uh, but yeah, it just puts everything together. And there you go. So thank you very much for passing by. That's about it from me today. Uh, until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Toodaloo.